Welcome to NSG229 Child Health Study Session 1 Growth and Development of a Child Introduction Have you seen a baby before? Imagine the process that goes into how that child was formed and its early life. We definitely were once a child and so many growth and development took place in you to help make you what you are today. In this study session, you will learn the meaning of the term growth and development, the importance of growth and the development of a child to a nurse, the principles of growth and development of a child, the factors that influence growth and development of a child, learning outcomes. At the end of the study session, you should be able to 1. Define the terms growth and development. 2. Explain the importance of growth and the development of a child to a nurse. 3. Discuss the principles of growth and development of a child. 4. Enumerate the factors that influence growth and development of a child. Meaning of growth and development. Growth and development shows the totality of the numerous changes that take place during the lifetime of an individual. The terms growth and development are interrelated and both refer to a dynamic process. The terms are often used interchangeably and each depends upon the other, but they are not the same. Growth refers to an increase in physical size of the whole or any of its parts and can be measured quantitatively in inches or centimeters and in pounds and kilograms. It implies a change in quantity and results when cells divide and synthesize new proteins. Physical change and increase in size which can be seen from figure 1.1. Growth 1. Physical change and increase in size. 2. It can be measured quantitatively. 3. Indicators of growth include height, weight, bone size and dentition. 4. Growth rates vary during different stages of growth and development. 5. The growth rate is rapid during the prenatal, neonatal, infancy and adolescent stages and slows during childhood. 6. Physical growth is minimal during adulthood. Development refers to progressive increase in skill and capacity of function. Development is the emerging and expanding of capacities of the individual to provide progressively greater facility in functioning and is achieved through growth, maturation and learning. It is the behavioral aspect of growth, e.g. development of ability to talk, walk, run, etc. as shown in figure 1.2. Development. It is an increase in the complexity of function and skill progression. It is the capacity and skill of a person to adapt to the environment. Development is the behavioral aspect of growth. Maturation is a qualitative change not induced by learning or experience, but it comes about as a result of passage of time. The period of growth and development extends throughout the life cycle. However, the period in which principal changes occur is from conception to the end of adolescence, birth to 20 years. Importance of the growth and development of a child. Nurses promote health in people from birth to death. Everyone has unique health care need, regardless of age, and these needs result from their physical, intellectual, emotional, sociocultural, spiritual, and environmental dimensions at their developmental level. Thus, the nurse must understand typical growth and development characteristics, tasks, and needs of patients of all ages because of the following reasons. 1. To plan and give holistic individualized care. 2. To enhance the nurse's knowledge about what to expect from a particular child 
at any given age and at what age certain kinds of behavior are likely to emerge. 3. The knowledge will enable the nurse to understand the behavior of parents and other adults who provide care for the child. 4. To have a better understanding of the reason for particular conditions and illness which occur in various age groups. 5. To enable the nurse to teach mothers how to observe the stages and help the children to achieve optimal growth and development. Principles of Growth and Development of a Child There are various principles that guide growth and development. It includes Principle of the Direction of Growth Differentiation Principle Principle of Discontinuity of Growth Rate Principle of Complexity of Growth Principles of Asynchronous Growth Principle of Uniqueness of the Individual Principle of the Modifiability of the rate and pattern of growth. Principle of the direction of growth. Growth and development follow regular and predictable trend. Three types of growth gradients are cephalocardial and proximodistal symmetric development. Hey, cephalocardial growth. This growth proceeds from the head before the other parts are developed. For example, is an infant the brain attains 70% of its growth by the age of 2 years. The implication is that adequate nutrition should be provided as well as mental stimulation like use of toys, etc. Influence of neuroendocrine systems on growth and development. Some hormones affect growth. Three hormones namely growth hormone, thyroid hormone, and androgens stimulate protein anabolism and thereby produce retention of elements essential for building protoplasm and bony tissue. Each hormone has its major effect at a different period of growth. Growth hormone or somatotropin is produced by the adenohypophysis. It is necessary for normal development from beginning of independent existence. It is controlled by the hypothalamus and has effect on linear growth through proliferation of cartilage cells of the epiphyseal plate until the time of epiphyseal closure at puberty. To inhibit synthesis of fats and oxidation of CHO, thyroid hormones, thyroxine and Triodotyronine are essential for normal postnatal growth. They stimulate metabolism and are important for growth and maturation of bones, teeth, and brain. Calcitonin, also secreted by the thyroid, influences ossification and development of bones. Gonadotrophic hormones, usually inactive, cause major changes during adolescence. They stimulate the gonads. The activated gonads produce sex hormones, estrogen and testosterone, which stimulate production of ova and spermatozoa and development of secondary sex characteristics. Estrogen has an inhibitory effect on epiphyseal growth. Linear growth sees when estrogen activity is accelerated. The secretion of estrogen and progesterone determine the rate of development during adolescence. Under secretion will cause delay or poor development. Influence of nutrition on growth and development. Dietary factors regulate growth at all stages of development and their effects are exerted in numerous and complex ways. Adequate nutrition provides the essential nutrients in the amount and balance necessary to sustain physical needs. The need for nutrients varies according to a child's age, height, weight, sex, health state, and activity level. Inadequacies in any or all of the essential nutrients will be reflected in altered growth. The nutritional requirements of childhood are directly related 
to the rate and direction of growth. During infancy and childhood, the demand for calories is relatively great, as evidenced by the rapid increase in both height and weight. Protein and caloric requirements are higher than at almost any period of postnatal life. The child's caloric intake must equal his energy output, plus that needed for growth and inadequate nutrition has greatest impact during the critical period of rapid cell division as during the period of fetal life and throughout the first two years of postnatal life. The brain and other organs develop at this stage and should not be jeopardized by poor nutrition and the negative effect may not be reversed. The influence of illness on growth and development. The illness of a child affects the entire family. If illness is mild and of short duration, there will be minimal changes and may have little influence on child development. A serious illness has considerable impact. Altered growth and development is one of the clinical manifestations in a number of hereditary disorders. Growth impairment is particularly marked in skeletal disorders such as the various forms of dwarfism. Many chronic illnesses associated with varying degrees of growth failure are congenital cardiac anomalies and respiratory disorders such as cystic fibrosis. Any disorder characterized by the inability to digest and absorb body nutrients will have adverse effects on growth and development, e.g. malabsorption syndrome and defect in digestive enzymes. Any disease that persists over extended period during the critical period of development may have permanent effect on growth. Principles of growth and development of a child. B. Proximodistal states that growth proceeds are from the central axis of the body, e.g., the trunk develops before the bird, that is, arms and legs. Growth proceeds from gross motor movement, like head lifting, to five motor movement, like learning to pick up a toy with fingers. C. Symmetric development of the body with both sides of the body developing equally. 2. Differentiation principle. Growth and development are both differentiated and integrated. This principle specifies that growth proceeds from simple to complex, from homogeneous to heterogeneous, and from general to specific. The zygote from fusion of sperm and egg develop into a single cell before multiplying to form the trillions of cells that constitute the whole human body. As nerve pathways develop, they become more specialized, allowing the growing child to respond to different stimuli. Learning to walk, learning to eat with spoon, which combines motor skills, eye coordination, cognitive patterning, and social imitation. The tax becomes easier as the child grows. 3. Principle of discontinuity of growth rate Different aspects of growth and development occur at different stages and at different rates. The rate changes at different periods. There are periods of accelerated growth as well as periods of decelerated growth, e.g. Accelerated growth occurs from birth to 2 years, slows down until about 10 years when the adolescent growth spot takes over. 4. Principle of complexity of growth. Growth is a complex experience, the same growth pattern and development level. Within each development level, the time infant rolls over, crawls, walks, and says its first words. Growth dysfunction in one area may likely affect growth in other areas. Physical impairment may cause emotional and social problems. 5. Principles of Asynchronous Growth The principles stipulate that the emphasis 
of development shift from one part of the body to another at different times. It means the various parts of the body do not grow simultaneously. One focus of growth is on a particular part of the body, the other part rests. Thus, growth and development are orderly. 6. Principle of Uniqueness of the Individual The place of growth and development is specific to each person. No two people are exactly the same. Even identical twins with the same genetic endowment, if reared in different environments, will turn out differently. Both physical and psychological and maturation vary among people. Once genetic heredity places restriction on the upper limit that can be achieved in growth and development. 7. Principle of the modifiability of the rate and pattern of growth. Although growth is innate, many factors can modify growth and development, including nutrition, love, and affection from caretakers and illnesses. Others include genetic abnormality, mongolism, interference with fertile development, such as maternal disease, germ measles, or very high fever exposure to radiation, poor nutrition, and the type of environment influences the child's growth. Factors influencing growth and development. Different factors affect the growth and development of a child. They are genetics, neuroendocrine systems, nutrition, illness, the influence of genetics on growth and development. Genetic factors influence the growth and development of children by determining certain growth patterns and traits, both positive and negative, that the child possesses at birth. Many anomalies and diseases are inherited. A gene is the carrier of hereditary materials, which make each individual unique. All human cells contain two sets of genes, one set from each parent. Genes are minor segments of diacyribonucleic acid, DNA, that carry the traits individuals inherit from their parents. When the genes from both parents produce similar effects, they are said to be homozygous. But when they produce different effects, they are heterozygous. When a child has heterozygous gene, the effect of only one gene will be manifested and the gene is considered dominant. The gene that is not manifested is called recessive gene. When a child inherits homozygous recessive genes from both parents, a recessive trait will be present. The organizational unit that carries the gene is the chromosome. There are 23 pairs in number. One pair is the sex chromosome, XX for females, XY for males. The other 22 pairs are called autosomes, meaning chromosomes that are not sex chromosome. Genes located on sex chromosomes are sex-linked or X-linked because all sex-linked genes are on X chromosome. Genetic disorders are caused by harmful gene or by a deviation in chromosomal number or structure. A congenital trait or disorder is present at birth. A familiar trait or disorder is one that is present in more than one member of a family. Genotype refers to the genetic makeup of the individual which because of recessive traits may differ from the personal physical appearance. The phenotype as genotype, phenotype is the visible, observable and easily measurable appearance of an organism. Dark skinned phenotype, genotype, AA, AS, AS, AX, sex, XX, XY. Classification of genetic anomalies. They were categorized according to three etiologies. Disorders determined by mutant and changed genes. Disorder caused by aberration in chromosome structure. Disorders due to intrauterine factors. 
Disorders determined by mutants and changed genes, e.g. polydactyl and deafness, when the gene is autosomal, that is, a gene located on any chromosome other than the sex chromosomes, X or Y. The principle of dominance determines manifestation, but when X-linked, the characteristic is always expressed in a male child and not in a female. This female may be carrier pass on traits without manifesting it themselves. E.g. father with recessive X chromosomes with traits pass X to daughter, Y to son, while the daughter will pass that X to her son. And if he receives two recessive X linked traits, one may manifest. Two, disorder caused by aberration in chromosome structure. Several types of structural change can occur. For example, Down syndrome translocation is the abnormal positioning of a chromosomal segment. Non disjunction is the misdistribution of chromosomes due to failure to separate. 3. Disorders due to intrauterine factors, such as diseases that result in a genetic and environmental interaction. An example is maternal rubella resulting in fetal deformity. About 25% of congenital defects result from genetic or chromosomal aberration, 10% from non-environmental factors, and 65% from unknown causes. Influence of neuroendocrine systems on growth and development. It is believed that there is probably some functional relationship between the hypothalamus and the endocrine system that influence growth. The hypothalamus controls the release of hormones that are responsible for maintaining, developing on the genetically determined growth patterns. Peripheral nervous system may influence growth because muscles deprived of nerve supply degenerate. Some hormones affect growth. Three hormones namely growth hormone, thyroid hormone and androgens stimulate protein anabolism and thereby produce retention of elements essential for building protoplasm and bony tissue. Each hormone has its major effect at a different period of growth. Growth hormone or somatotropin is produced by the adenohypophysis. It is necessary for normal development from beginning of independent existence. It is controlled by the hypothalamus and has effect on linear growth through proliferation of cartilage cells of the epiphyseal plate onto the time of epiphyseal closure at puberty. To inhibit synthesis of fat and oxidation of CHO, thyroid hormones, tyrosine and triodotyronine are essential for normal postnatal growth. They stimulate metabolism and are important for growth and maturation of bones, teeth and brain. Calcitonin also secreted by the thyroid influences ossification and development of bones. Gonadotrophic Hormones, usually inactive, cause major changes during adolescence. They stimulate the gonads. The activated gonads produce sex, hormones, estrogen, and testosterone, which stimulates production of ova and spermatozoa and development of secondary sex characteristics. Oestrogen has an inhibitory effect on epiphyseal growth. Linear growth sees when oestrogen activity is accelerated. The secretion of oestrogen and progesterone determine the rate of development during adolescence. Under secretion will cause delay or poor development. Influence of nutrition on growth and development. Dietary factors regulate growth at all stages of development and their effects are exerted in numerous and complex ways. Adequate nutrition provides the essential nutrients in the amount and balance necessary to sustain physical needs. The need for nutrients varies according to a child's age, 
height, weight, sex, health state, and activity level. In adequacies in any or all of the essential nutrients will be reflected in altered growth. The nutritional requirements of childhood are directly related to the rate and direction of growth. During infancy and childhood, the demand for calories is relatively great, as evidenced by the rapid increase in both height and weight. Protein and caloric requirements are higher than at almost any period of postnatal life the child's caloric intake must equal its energy output plus that needed for growth and inadequate nutrition has greatest impact during the critical period of rapid cell division as during the period of fertile life and throughout the first two years of postnatal life. The brain and other organs develop at this stage and should not be jeopardized by poor nutrition and the negative effect may not be reversed. The influence of illness on growth and development. The illness of a child affects the entire family. If illness is mild and of short duration, there will be minimal changes and may have little influence on child development. A serious illness has considerable impact. Altered growth and development is one of the clinical manifestations in a number of hereditary disorders. Growth impairment is particularly marked in skeletal disorders such as the various forms of dwarfism. Many of the disorders of metabolism such as vitamin D resistant rickets, numerous endocrine disorders interfere with the normal growth pattern. Many chronic illnesses associated with varying degrees of growth failure are congenital cardiac anomalies and respiratory disorders such as cystic fibrosis. Any disorder characterized by the inability to digest and absorb body nutrients will have adverse effects on growth and development, e.g. malabsorption syndrome and defects in digestive enzymes. Any disease that persists over extended period during the critical period of development may have permanent effects on growth. A prolonged illness that occurs in the second year during the phase of rapid acquisition of motor control and autonomy will make the development to be slow and the child may be passive and require special stimulation to develop the independence which it would have developed spontaneously under normal circumstances. Maternal disease and disorders has lifelong effect on the child. Infections may be acquired through the placenta since the child is naturally, physiologically and physically attached to the mother. The effect of the disease to the fetus is brain damage or mental retardation, sensory and cranial nerve damage, especially vision and hearing. Other infection diseases known to lead to aberration in fertile development are gonorrhea, syphilis, and rubella. Chronic hypertension in the mother could lead to IUGHR or fetal loss. Others are influenza and mumps. Summary 1. Growth refers to an increase in physical size of the whole or any of its parts and can be measured quantitatively in inches or centimeters and in pounds and kilograms. Development refers to progressive increase in skill and capacity of function. Maturation is a qualitative change not induced by learning or experience, but it comes about as a result of passage of time. 2. It is important for nurses to understand the growth and development of a child as nurses promote health in people from birth to death in order to plan and give holistic individualized care. To enhance the nurse's knowledge about what to expect from a particular child at any given age and at what age certain kinds of behavior are likely to emerge. 3. There are various principles that guide growth and development. It includes 
principle of the direction of growth, differentiation principle, principle of discontinuity of growth rate, principle of complexity of growth, principles of asynchronous growth, and principle of uniqueness of the individual, principle of the modifiability of the rate and pattern of growth. Four, different factors affect the growth and development of a child. They are genetics, neuroendocrine systems, nutrition, illnesses, ETC. End of study session one. Thanks for listening.